this is short hammer it is the 28th of january 2020 and we are taking a look at regn now regn has been selling the last few days and today um i believe it's bloomberg made a statement about sort of cutting the patent protection on drugs to reduce cost and that kind of hit a few of the pharmaceutical companies so looking at regn what are we looking at we are looking at two levels we're looking at the 328 and we're looking at the current level around 339 now for me i really like this 328 area and i think that we can sort of maybe we'll get a little bit of selling down to that area we could buy here but the reason I like the 328 is if you look at the, let's go to the weekly, I think, take a peek here. If you look at the weekly, I like this area as an area that's almost like a plateau. Uh, I really do like that 328. I think we can see structure down to here because we see in this area, we saw buyer step in, buyer step in, buyer step in, buyer step in. Uh, went a little bit lower here down to 320, but buyers did take it back up. I like that area for buyers to potentially step in, and maybe they step in here at the 339. But I'm going to be keeping an eye on REGN around the 328s. They do have earnings coming up. And let's see, what is that date? Um, in February, so next week. Hmm. So this is interesting, but I do kind of like the levels where it's going. 325, that area was a rough area for it to get through. If I remember correctly, during um, earnings, roughly this area was interesting because it pulled below and it took a while for it to break back above that. But when it did, it really made a nice move to the upside. So I'm going to be watching REGN and seeing if there are any potential long positions in this that are possible. And as usual, what I do is I wait for on the lower time frame for the, the, the candle structure to get to my, my zone. And then I look for bullish candles to either tell me to buy or bearish candles below to tell me to fade. And that's basically how I use these levels. Um, it's candle structure levels and also power of pivots that I use to be able to get my entries and exits. So this is interesting. I'll be keeping an eye on this um, on Tuesday, see if I see anything interesting here. This is a spready stock. So if you're going to use options or even if you're going to use shares, um, be aware it's spready. Let's take a peek at... NVIDIA and so far NVIDIA on the weekly holding this little uptrend I think I drew this on a um, on the daily chart let's take a peek at the daily so even with this pull down we're still holding over the 230s they bought us back up over the 238s if it's bullish tomorrow. We probably see a squeeze into the 242s. If we're bearish, then we see a flush, but probably a dip into the 230s. So I'll be watching NVIDIA to see what happens, how we open. Are we, um, are we going to be gapped up, gapped down? Are we going to be flat? And do bears still have control? Will we see a little bit of selling action down to this, this area here, this 230s? So I'll be watching to see where we are. If we're below this 238 area. I will be looking for bearish candlestick formations to be able to get short and fade this approaching, approaching the 230s. As we get lower, I'll be watching this to see how the candle structures are on the lower time frame. If we're bullish above this 238, I'll be long at the 242 and looking to exit there. So that's my plan for NVIDIA tomorrow. We'll see how that shakes out. See how the four hour looks. Mm. We'll see if this 238 holds and gives us a squeeze or if the 242, if we open up above 242, now look for a little run up into this gap down area, this 245. 
So we'll see how this shakes out on NVIDIA tomorrow. Switch this back to the one day. And let's see, next up is Amazon. And I'll probably be avoiding Amazon this week unless I'm doing verticals on it, just based on the, the premium is so juiced and I do not believe in paying, uh, overpaying I should say for, for uh, on, on premium. So when they juice premium, I usually move on to something else unless the, the movement that I expect is so great that I'm willing to, to just pay so much more. But usually I'm not overpaying on that premium. It's not gonna happen. So what we were saying in our last video on Amazon was watch for a dip buy in the 1850s and if that doesn't hold, look for a dip buy in the 1830s if the 1830s hold for a squeeze and a push back up. If the 1830s don't hold, then we fade that all the way down, see how far that can go. And that's probably around this 1805. So if we look at this, nice little push up here. Let's look at the four hour to get a little bit more context. So in the four hour on Amazon, this shaded area, the area that we drew, as the area where we're looking to potentially dip by. But what it looks like that happened is that we gapped down and we tested the 1830s. This is the 1820, 24, it looks like. And we went below the top of the channel, which is the 1830s. So buyers did step in and got a slight pullback right into this. It's funny. The bottom of this area is 1841 and we rejected. So what we want to see is, will the buyers step in and give us a squeeze to the upside? Or since we're below the 1830s as of right now, what we're going to see some more selling. And what you really want to watch is if we dip below the 1824 area, I will be watching for a gap close and a fade down to the 1805s. So I'd keep an eye out for that on Amazon if you're going to be trading Amazon this week. Um, but below the 1830s, I am bearish. So my bullish perspective lasts as long as we stay above 1830s. When we're below that, I'm looking for downside here on Amazon. So we'll see how this shakes out if the buyers truly have left the building temporarily and if the sellers are driving the, driving the, uh, the truck. We'll see where they take it. But we'll see also where the overall market is. Because what you want to look for, like for me, what I look for is overall market trend. If the market is headed up, I primarily want to look for bullish tickers. If the market is headed down, I primarily want to look for bearish tickers. And I find my setups within that. But I do kind of want to follow the trend of the market. And if we're channeling, then I need to recognize that and trade accordingly. So uh, Amazon's interesting. I'll be watching Amazon at these levels that I just mentioned. Let's move on to, that might be it. Um, let's see what we have. I think that's it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Even if you look at the, let's take a peek at the five minute real quick. Okay, come on. Down to the five minute. And you see this is kind of all over the place. Pulled up above here, boom. So now, what I would automatically do is look at this as like a channel. It's 1837 is the top. And right through here, 1829 is the bottom. So I'll start playing this once we break below, get long. 1837 touch here. I will be fading this area here. And it would have been eating my lunch above, but then it came back through. So that's interesting, but not enough movement, even though we had it at the end of the day. So that would be interesting. But um, Amazon is interesting. I'm not touching that this week. Let's take a peek at Netflix really quickly. And look at the higher time frame on Netflix. How does the four hour look? So it's right below this 343. So it's the same way that I was mentioning in NVIDIA. What I'm going to be looking for is if we're above this 343 with bullish candlestick formations, I'm going to get long and I'll see how far we can take it. If we're below, then I'll be short and I'll be fading this to the downside and see how far it goes. 
But what I'll be looking for is any sign of uh, demand and I'll be exiting. But the potential is for this to head to the next level, which is down here around this 335-ish area. So there's definitely a little bit of room in uh, Netflix. So I'll be watching these levels. I'll probably set my alerts a little bit later for the break and hold or break and hold above, whether it's below or above, I'll be looking for the, um, pre, the, the, the requisite candle structure, whether if we're below bearish, above bullish. So we'll see how that shakes out. And I'll also be looking at the market trend tomorrow to see if we're trending up or if we're trending down. And if we're trending up and we're above this level, then I'll be looking for a bullish uh, formation or a bullish play on Netflix. If we're below, I'll be looking for bearish. And I think that is, I'll stick with those for now. Uh, Target worked out and uh, Dollar Tree worked out. CI was interesting. We'll see how that shakes. But uh, if you like this video, tap the like button and don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel, Power of Pivots on YouTube, where you can look forward to getting more content like this and also content from Elisa as she shows you how she utilizes her power of pivot script to be able to find great entries and exits, not just intraday, but also on swing trades and higher time frames. Thank you for your time.